Well, hey, church, happy Friday to you. Today is Good Friday. Uh, hopefully these uh, Holy Week devotionals has been, uh, have been a blessing to you. Uh, if you. As you've been following along, yesterday Mike talked about how Jesus washed the disciples' feet in the upper room um, and how he taught them what it looks like to love. And today we're going to be looking at John chapter 18 and 19. We're not going to, I'm not going to read all of that, but I would encourage you on your own time to um, read John 18 and 19 and just get the full picture of what's happening here. But I do want to summarize a bit of it and then just kind of dial into a couple of, of spots uh, for our kind of devotional thought today. So uh, John 18 and 19, uh, leading up to this point, Jesus was praying for uh, his church uh, in the late part of John 17 to, to be unified. And I think it's just a good reminder for us that, you know, the, the thing that Jesus was praying for was for us to be unified. And uh, I'm grateful for, uh, for you as a church. And uh, I pray that as we continue to just navigate uh, these uncharted waters, we remain unified and that uh, coming out of this, we would be stronger than we were before. So John 18, John is walking us through the the process of Jesus being betrayed by Judas, him leading a group of soldiers to arrest Jesus, and then just the process of him going through the Jewish hoops of being kind of questioned and accused of of wrongdoing in their eyes. Uh, because they saw him as a threat to their power. And so Jesus goes before Annas and then the the high priest Caiaphas. Uh, He is brought ultimately to Pilate, who was the governor of that region for the Roman Empire. And uh, the the reality for the Jews is that they could not sentence someone to death. They had to do that through the Roman Empire. And what we see is these religious leaders manipulating Pilate to get him to crucify Jesus. It's interesting because Pilate's interactions with Jesus on this uh, this day were basically he walked away saying like, I, I don't see anything that he's done wrong. Like, why are you wanting me to crucify him? And uh, they start to manipulate him. They start to say that Jesus uh, declared himself to be the son of God. And that was a subversion of Caesar's power, uh, the king of the Roman empire, the emperor. Um, and, and so they are basically threatening Pilate to, to take this to the higher ups and say, Hey, you've, You've not done your duty as a governor and crucifying someone who is trying to subvert Caesar's authority. Um, and so what we see here is, is Pilate having a conversation with Jesus and ultimately deciding to crucify him because of the pressure of the crowd. And so Jesus is uh, given a, a crown of thorns. He's carrying a cross up to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. John tells us that in uh, John chapter 19, verse 17. And so they they bring him up there, and it's interesting because John does not give us a lot of verses on the actual physical reality, gruesomeness, and graphicness of the crucifixion. I think it's fitting um, that he doesn't do that, as I get the fly off my head, uh, because he is the, the disciple whom Jesus loved the beloved disciple. Like he doesn't want to share all of the details about his good friend's death. And it just shows the humanness in uh, what we have written in scripture. Um, But what he does tell us is that he was crucified in between two criminals, uh, that the words, uh, the king of the Jews were written uh, in multiple languages in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek uh, above him. And as Jesus is getting to the final moments of his life, uh, John does tell us this. Jesus, uh, he said uh, in verse 28 of John 19, after this, when Jesus knew that everything was now finished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, he said, I'm thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was sitting there, so they fixed a sponge full of sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it up to his mouth. Verse 30, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. Then bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. And then to make sure that he was dead, the the soldiers uh, pierced his side to make sure that he was dead before they took him off of the cross and put him in the tomb. Uh, But one thing I want to just bring out real quick is what Jesus said, it is finished. You know, we have a natural tendency to try and earn 
uh, good deeds to try and look at this heaven and hell thing and God's uh, favor as something that we can earn. As uh, Because we all have a natural bent toward us to desire a relationship with God, but also, oftentimes what we look to is our own good deeds versus our bad deeds. And we think that we can weigh the good deeds up so that they would outweigh the bad deeds and that would be okay. Uh, but what Jesus has done on the cross, and this is not what the disciples understood at the time, but what they would find out on Sunday is that this was the case, that what Jesus said it is finished on the cross was that all of our striving to try and earn our salvation, all of our striving to try and earn a relationship with the Almighty God of the universe, all of our striving to try and be good enough, all of our striving to try and uh, fix ourselves and clean ourselves up because of our brokenness and our mess. Uh, it's all in vain because what Jesus did is he finished the work. He finished the work of salvation. And that is why today is a day of celebration for followers of Jesus. Good Friday is good because of what it meant for us, because of what Jesus did by laying his life down for the sake of us. He saved us, not because of our goodness, but because of his own purpose and grace. That is something to celebrate today. I don't have a big application point for us other than for us to be grateful for what Jesus has done. So I'd encourage you uh, when you have some time, read John 18 and 19 and be uh, encouraged by what Jesus has done. He has come down to rescue us. And that, my friends, is good news.